Dan the Man fans, welcome back to another Metacast video with me, Dan the Man Sings. Yes, that's right, we are back for November 2024 and we are super excited to count down the last few weeks of the Stellar Crown format. That's right, Surgeon Sparks has recently released and there are going to be some absolutely incredible decks that are going to be coming out with this set. We will review them when they become legal in a couple of weeks' time, but until then, we've still got the Latin America Internationals coming up of the weekend of the 15th to the 17th of November. What amazing stellar crown decks are we going to get with this? Let's wait and see. I have the top 10 for you here today, so without further ado, let's get started. Well then, in at number 10, we have a Losso Box. That's right, this deck fell off the race side for a little bit thanks to Kyrim with its Colress ability to put 110 damage on three different Pokemon but Kyrim isn't that popular at the moment and as you can see this is an awesome list here we are packing the Comfies obviously to um, use the Lost Zone ability there to get cars into the Lost Zone. We've got Sableye there to drop damage counters on with its Lost Mine uh, move. We've got obviously Cramorant for an early attack. Radiant Greninja, do not underestimate its Moonlight Shuriken move there, obviously to put 90 damage on two Pokemon. We've got Blood Moon Solana there, the 260 hit point Pokemon. If they get you down to five prizes, you can do 260 damage for free. Iron Hands EX, obviously, to swing in there and get early two prize Pokemon from the low HP, like Charmanders and Pidgeys, etc. And then we've got Spiritomb there to obviously turn off abilities like Luminion V. Obviously, this deck has been pretty standard over the last few formats. We've got four Colruses Experiment there, Boss's Orders. We've got there, obviously, the Prime Catcher. We've got plenty of switch cards. We've got super rods to get things back into our deck. And we've got plenty of energy there. And obviously, Pokestop is super important to make sure we get all of our item cards. This deck is still incredibly powerful. It's got a couple of months now before all these cards rotate. So guys, do have a play with this deck. You will do very well at challenges and cups and could potentially do well at a regional as people are not expecting it. That is why this deck gets my number 10. Right then, in at number 9, we have Snorlax Stall. Oh my goodness, I came up against two of these at the Gdansk Regional um, the other week and oh my god, it is so, so frustrating. That's right, this deck really does wind me up. It's great fun to play and it's really nice to kind of come up with a different win condition, but oh my goodness, this deck will frustrate your opponents. You've got the Snorlax there, obviously, with its block ability. Mimikyu's in there to obviously stop any EX or V Pokemon attacking you. Rotom's there for the draw. You've got there the Cornerstone Ogre Pond there to stop it being attacked with Pokemon with abilities. And the Diancie is there. It's got that nice move, which if you have special energy attached to its Pokemon, it will do 40 damage. So it's good, it's good going into Lugia, and it's a fighting type as well, so you get some weaknesses on some of its Pokemon. Obviously, you've got four Arvon, you've got the Pennies for bringing it back up, you've got the Misfortune Sisters to look at the top five and then discard any items. You've got the Silenes there to potentially get cards back from your discard this deck has a lot going for it it's incredibly annoying requires a little bit of brain skill don't play at a best of one only play at a best of three events because obviously you won't have enough time but the, the win condition is to deck you out so yeah this poke this deck has done incredibly well over the last couple of years i'm not gonna lie i'm looking forward to snorlax rotating but don't underestimate this deck if you come up against it i wish you guys the very best of luck it gets my number nine position Okay, in at number eight, we have another annoying semi-control archetype, and that is Iron Thorns EX. It is a pretty basic deck to play. It is not the most exciting, but it has made many, many day twos and will wind your opponent up. The best way I think to play this is just by playing four Iron Thorns EXs. That way you can't go wrong. They can't boss up anything else to make the ability not work anymore. 
Um, you just need to be careful that you don't obviously get donked. So you play the four iron thorns, you've got the Arvons there to get your item card and you also get um, your future boost energy capsule so you can um, switch in and out. You've got four boss there to go after Pokemon you need. The researchers are really good for consistency. Judge is also good to get their hand size down to four. You can see there's an awful lot of fours of this deck. The crushing hammers there for annoyance. You've got the pokey gears to make sure you get the uh, supporter cards you need. Lost vacuum is lost vacuum is very useful <coughs> in this deck to get rid of any um, to get rid of any tool cards or stadium cards that are annoying. Earth and vessel is quite good to get energy. The enhance hammer is good if you come up against uh, Lugia, for example, or something that has a special energy. Uh, this deck is useful. The Lost City is very is good as well to get cards into the Lost Zone or any Pokemon that you don't want to be facing again. And Tower Store is there to obviously get tool cards as well. Yes, this deck hasn't won really anything since Worlds, and as we know, it got a controversial win um, at Worlds because it did obviously lose in top eight against Regi Drago. But this deck is good. There's a lot of data out there that it had um, two top eight finishes at Gdansk. So for me, this is definitely a number eight deck. Let's move on to number seven. In at number seven, we have Dragapult EX. Now, Dragapult EX has had a very funny kind of season this season it kind of drops in and out this is the winning list from Dortmund played by Ruzaki Usag Okado he did really well with this and ended up coming first as you can see he just went for consistency and for simplicity he got the, the uh, Dracaloaks in there he got the drag a Dragapult obviously the nice 4-3-3 line there he got the Dust Skulls and Dust Noirs there to put more damage counters on things. He played the Rotom to obviously draw cards, the Minion to search for that supporter, and the Pheasant Dippity to obviously the flip the script when you get knocked out. And the Alakazam is a super important uh, Radiant inclusion because it means you can move drag, drag uh, you can move damage counters around. This deck is very powerful and when piloted by the right person will do well. Sparkling Crystal is the A spec of choice because obviously if you attach it to a Dragapult it means you can attack for one energy. What more can you say? 200 damage and then a sprinkling of 6 damage counters. This deck has a lot going for it and that is why it is my number 7. Okay. In at number six, we have a new entry, and I came up against three of these at the Gdansk Regional, and I lost to two, and I won one. Here we have Palkia V-Star. Now, believe it or not, all of these cards were legal at Worlds, but no one really thought about playing it. I think it got a top nine placement at Baltimore, and Stefan Ivanov got this to a top four finish at Dortmund. It's really simple you get your dust skulls set up you try and get two set up by turn two you explode them and try and take down a two prize pokemon obviously then giving you giving up two prize cards you then put palkia v star down and you start smashing loads of damage i have to say the greninja ex is a really nice inclusion in this and obviously being a terror type it becomes fighting the one water energy for 170 and then search for a card it's just brilliant it's got high hit points and obviously being a fighting type, it hits many weaknesses, especially into the into cards like Terrapagos. The Radiant Greninja is also really useful. I've seen it, I've seen Palkia V Star's ability used a lot to power it up and then hit 90 damage to two Pokemon early in the game. Blood Moon, Blood Moon Ursulana is also really good for hitting high damage towards the end. And then the Squawk is good for getting things into the discard. And then obviously you've got your kind of support Pokemon with Mew and with Vezendipede. Obviously, the uh, the trainer lineup is pretty standard. The Night Stretcher is really good for getting a Pokemon or getting an energy back from the discard. Trekking Shoes is there for consistency, and you're playing a nice seven water energy count there. This deck is pretty powerful, and when piloted by the right person, can really sweep the field. I've seen a few day twos with this. Um, it can brick the one the one game I did play against this and beat the poor girl I was playing brick so heavily with this so you've got to be make sure you're consistent but otherwise it's a great deck and I can definitely see it doing well before it rotates early next year right let's see what's number five okay in at number five we have got Terrapagos now this is the one that was piloted by Todd Redcliffe at the Gdansk Heat Regionals last weekend. He came second with this deck. 
it is incredibly powerful. If you get the fan Rotom out and use its fan call ability on turn one to get three colorless Pokemon out, you are cooking. The Pidgey and the Pidgeot are brilliant for consistency. Blood Moon and Ursulana is back again in there. If there's Indipity for draw, um, the only reason Terrapagos doesn't score high is because of its limited damage output. Unfortunately, you really need the Area Zero under depths out all the time for it to be hitting those magic numbers because it only does 30 damage times the number of bench Pokemon. Obviously, the Hoot Hoot and the Knocked Out are brilliant for searching cards up that you need, but obviously once you've used them, that's it. There's no real way of being able to use them again. Uh, Briar is very powerful. If you get to your opponent down to two prize cards and can knock out something with a Terrapagos, you can take an extra prize. You could potentially take three prizes. You can control the prize race as well with the Dust Skull and Dust Noir. This deck has a lot going for it. I think with the next set coming out, it receives a couple of other cards that will be very useful for it. But at the moment, it just doesn't hit hard enough. So that is why it is number five on my list. Okay, guys, let's see what's in the top four. Okay, in at number four is Charizard. I was unsure about this because I really wanted to put it higher. It is still a fantastic deck and literally, other than ADP, Charizard EX is one of the most powerful cards ever printed by Pokemon. It can power itself up with its ability, it's got a move that stacks and builds over time as your opponent takes prizes, and it's also got huge hit pointing and brilliant, brilliant typing. Dark typing is fantastic. This deck has so much going for it. I have played it many times. My son has been playing it for a long time. He has won numerous events with it. I have done very well at challenges with it. Do not underestimate this deck. Yes, sometimes it can brick, but all decks can do that. And it can also struggle against things like Reggie Drago and Lugia. But if you go first with this deck, get set up, get your Charmanders out, get your Pidgeot out, you will be cooking very, very quickly. As you can see, I've made a couple of changes to this deck. Maximum Belt is amazing. Slap that on a Charizard and you've suddenly got a 430 HP Pokemon. Oh my goodness. Do not underestimate that Ace Bet card. Anyway, guys, this deck is brilliant and I will be seen for a lot longer until some of these cards rotate early next year. On that note, let's see what number three is. Oh yes, here we go. Number three, Lugia. Now this is Josh Joshua's Zapdos TCG's um, list that he's been playing since Worlds. It doesn't include any Stellar Crown Pokemon. He got to eighth place or top eight in Lille, I believe. However, he didn't do very well at Gdansk. I think he only got top 128 or 256 at Gdansk. That's the thing with Lugia. It can either absolutely smash it, as soon as you get those Archeops out, you are going, but it can brick really hard. If you don't get those Archeops out or only get one out, your whole engine is busted. But you can see from this version, we've got the three Mincino Cincino line, so you're using a single prize attacker to take down things like Charizard with 330 HP. The Iron Hands is brilliant for taking extra prizes from little single prize Pokemon early on in the game. Uh, as long as that legacy energy isn't prized, I've played this deck many times and that's been prized. But you can see there, it's got a nice mix of different energy types. You've got the supporters there to really help you. The Carmine's great on turn one. I'm looking forward to seeing that new card when um, the Surgeon Sparks come out that lets you discard five cards. That will make this this card, this uh, this one very useful. But until then, Lugia definitely comes in at number three. It's had some great top eight finishes. It won in Joinville. However, it just lacks consistency sometimes, and that is why it is my number three. Let's see what number two is. Okay, in at number two, we've got the consistent, the easy and nice deck to play Raging Bolt EX with Ogre Pond. Yes, that's right. This deck can smash some serious damage. If you are able to get Professor Sardis Vitality out on turn one going second, you can knock out a two prize Pokemon really quickly in the active. You've got your energy there to set up. You can get the energy in the discard, you can power up and you can get 210 to 280 damage going really quickly on turn one. You're playing some nice basic Pokemon there. You've got Consistency. The Prime Catcher is your Ace Spec of Inclusion. You've got some Switch Carts there to hit, do a little bit of healing. You've got Radiant Greninja to get uh, energy in the discard. Vezendipity is obviously there for Flip the Script. This deck is easy and nice to play. Yes, again, it can sometimes brick. 
come. But to be honest, as long as you're getting the energy on and you're getting the raging bolts out, you are laughing. This has had some really, really good placing. Caleb did really well with Louisville coming first with this deck. And I have to say, it is very powerful. If you like um, consistency, if you like an easy deck to pilot, this is the deck for you. Well guys, I've been talking for quite a while now. This is my top nine so far. Let's see what number one is. Are you ready? Here we go. Oh yes, in at number one, we have got Reggie Drago V-Star. I played this at Gdansk last weekend. No, sadly, I didn't do that well with it, but maybe that's because I was tired or whatever. But this deck has won two regionals recently. It won in Europe. It won Gdansk last weekend where it beat Tord Redcliffe, and then it also won in Lille. This deck has it all. It wasn't the most powerful deck at the time until Tillmask Ogapon EX came out. That's it. You could get the grass energies on, you use the energy switch, and then you can use Apex Dragon to copy any dragon move. The ones you want to use are Giratina and obviously Dragapult. They are the ones you want to use. Was my Reggie Dragon V-Star was going to get knocked out. Kyrim was brilliant for smacking 130 damage on three Pokemon. And if you pull it off early, you can actually donk people. So this deck is fantastic. And don't underestimate its V-Star ability. Yes, its Legacy Star ability is incredible. You, you can use this to get uh, two cards back from your discard. I used to get Prime Catcher back to use that twice. Um, it discards the top seven so it's quite good for getting dragon pokemon into the discard save it for when you really need it because trust me it will come in clutch this deck is brilliant it's got all the cards it needs currently i personally think it's the best deck in format it's going to go on you wait this deck is potentially going to win the latin america international next weekend it is phenomenal guys what can i say this deck has it all and this rounds off my top 10 for the current stellar crown uh, format of november 2024 well guys, I hope you enjoyed this. There are some fantastic decks in the format at the moment. It really is diverse. Any one of these, any one of the top five decks could have been number one. It's going to be really interesting to see what uh, the Latin America International bring because this is going to be the last um, main tournament with this current format. Surgeon Sparks has just released. That's got some incredible cards in it. Just you wait. I'll do a deck review, a meta review for that when it comes out in a couple of weeks' time. But until then, guys, I hope you enjoy my new content. Um, Stellar Crown is a brilliant format, and I'm going to be very sad to see it gone soon enough. But until then, enjoy the decks, enjoy your time playing the Pokemon TCG, and I'll see you in my next Metacars video. All the best, and take care.